Hey everyone, welcome to the Be More podcast, where we inspire you to be a little bit more of every role within the Salesforce ecosystem and beyond. Today's session is a very special session for me, kind of close to my heart as a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. We are talking about what it takes to be more proud and kind of shows the power of the Salesforce ecosystem. When I put out a call to speakers, I had a number of different people reach out to me wanting to talk about this. And uh, I am joined by today's speaker, uh, Zach. So Zach, are you able to introduce yourself for our audience, please? Yeah, of course, Tom. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. My name is Zachary Banks. I am a Salesforce platform owner at Link Logistics. So Link Logistics is a commercial real estate company, and I oversee the engineering, architecture, operations, and administration of the Salesforce platform. So that occasionally means, you know, getting dirty, designing architecture, dealing with admin tickets myself, helping out developers with their code, and sometimes dealing externally with different vendors or partners to get the job done. Outside of Link, I'm 12 times certified. I'm one certification away from System Architect. I've also nice. gotten a Salesforce MVP. I ran the Austin, Texas admin user group for five years. Um, and now I help out Melissa Shepard with the Boston Architect group. And I'm excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for making the time to to have this conversation today. And uh, definitely somebody that I've known about in the ecosystem for a while. And uh, without sounding a little bit creepy, you have been on my speaker list uh, for a while as well. So it was just as well. Uh, otherwise, I was going to get you to talk about Apex or something. So I'm, I'm glad yeah. we, we're we talking about this. So this is more fun. Yeah, exactly. You know, we can kind of be ourselves and kind of maybe less technical as well. So that's, that's great. So Thinking about your role now and kind of pivoting a little bit, your role for the rest of this session really is ultimately what it takes to kind of be more proud and as a result, kind of more authentic um, in in what you do and kind of within your, your working life and the Salesforce community. So thinking about things kind of from that angle, how do you think that you embody that when you interact with your coworkers or other people within the ecosystem? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So how I embody that when I'm interacting with coworkers or others in the ecosystem is I just try to be open about it. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm openly flaunting it or shoving it in people's faces as one might say. But just as how somebody might like talk about their husband or wife, I'll say, oh, me and my partner did this. Or I'll just drop subtle words and think it's mm. entirely normal because it is normal. And I just want to normalize that type of conversation. Yeah, perfect. And I, I totally get that as well. And maybe just a kind of personal like curiosity thing. Do you tend to use the word partner or would you use uh, another word? I tend to use partner and it's really yeah. interesting because I feel like over the years I've seen a lot of people, even straight people, start to use the term, oh, my partner. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's it's kind of better. It's gender neutral as well, which is another another thing. And yeah, I think it's just kind of a more acceptable way of, of talking, really, and kind of puts everybody on the same level slay, same kind of playing field by using a term that's applicable to everyone so how do you ensure that you kind of don't take your your eye off the ball kind of when it comes to talking about these things and and who you are like for example if somebody were to perhaps presume you are something that you're not would you make a point of correcting them would you almost let it slide like how does that work or does it kind of depend? It's always funny when that happens, when somebody <laughs> asks me about, like, if I have a wife or yeah. a girlfriend and I just suddenly correct them and say, no, I have a partner uh, or I'll say boyfriend if I need to be more direct. Um, but I just very suddenly continue the conversation mm. And I feel that's enough to tell where they'll typically correct themselves. Occasionally, you'll get those people that are like weirded out. They're like, oh, you're gay. 
And then they turn the whole conversation into the ad, and I'm like, yeah, let's move on from that. Yeah, yeah, I totally get get that kind of gently correct them, and then and then move on. I think that's that's possibly something that I would lean into as well. So, kind of thinking about this a little bit more now for anybody else in the ecosystem that's perhaps not out to anybody or, or their co-workers because appreciate it's, it's different coming out on a personal level and on a professional level what advice would you give to somebody that's kind of looking to embrace things more and kind of be more more open with people yeah so in my journey of being open so I've been open and out and proud since I was 14 years old so right in high school is when I first came out. Um, I wish I had known then that it would just constantly always be a journey of coming out because you're always <laughs> yeah. people like, oh no, it's this. Um, it's never a one and done type thing. In terms of the ecosystem and being comfortable, I think the ecosystem's a very safe place. Everyone's <laughs> very accommodating. Salesforce itself has uh, equality as one of its core values. I've noticed some people over the years, um, you can probably think of one that, um, thinking about off the top of my head, somebody that's a little rambunctious, how they've come out recently. Um, And I think the ecosystem is a very warm and welcoming spot that can, you know, allow people to talk about it more freely. And the more you talk about it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's great. And I think, Kind of coming back to the the Salesforce of it all, really, like the equality being one of Salesforce's core values and the other internal initiatives like Outforce kind of naturally ripple through the community, don't you think? Yeah, I think Outforce does uh, occasionally ripple through the community. Whenever I've interfaced with Outforce, and maybe I'll get in trouble for saying this, it always (laughs) seems like an employee focus group. And so the community is kind of like an afterthought mm. for Outforce itself. But I think the community team does a really good job of bringing that like correlation of, you know, LGBT pride. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think for all intents purposes, it is more internally facing. That's definitely my, my understanding of it. But I know that there are kind of, how do I describe this? Like offshoots of it happening at events, like there are LGBTQA plus meetups like happening at Dreamforce. Um, And some of the people involved in that are perhaps some of the people involved in the Outforce work internally as well. So I think it, it does definitely have an impact. And I think it, again, just kind of makes everybody equal when ensures that Salesforce remains inclusive, which is great to kind of hear. So thinking about yourself and and your own journey, ultimately kind of with with coming out, if you were going to go on that journey again, like, is there anything you would change or do differently? Do you think perhaps you approach certain situations in different ways kind of now that you're, you're older and wiser? Or would you not change anything at all? God, I feel like everyone would want to <laughs> change some stuff. Maybe I would have censored myself a little bit more because, um, mm. you know, I was born in Boston um, and people in uh, New England in the United States, they're pretty blunt um, in that area. And so I definitely, you know, sometimes people would say stuff and uh, it would upset me. And so I wouldn't bite my tongue. Um, I had no shame in that. And then <laughs> over the years, I learned... Uh, you know, how to refine myself and just be more Mm. subtle and the message gets across just the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's kind of something I've been a little bit on a journey with as well. I think initially I was very kind of almost, how do I describe this, brutally honest about it. Like if somebody asked me about my wife or my girlfriend, I would be quite blunt and quite sharp with them to, to kind of, put them on the right track or to correct them. But I think over time, and I think maybe it's just like a maturity thing as well, right? I've kind of learned to do that in a gentler, kinder way, perhaps. Yeah, you- I call it like hitting pause and thinking of like positive intent. Mm. I mean, it's not our job necessarily to educate 
people of their ignorance. Uh, but there's ways <laughs> yeah. to there's way to go about it. You can be sharp and pointed. And what's that saying? You go a lot farther with honey rather than vinegar, or something like that. If you're sharp and pointed, people are gonna remember that negative experience. Or if you just, you know, treat it like normal, have continue the conversation, don't draw attention to it. Just, you know, it's business as usual, so to speak, it goes a lot better than just, you know, calling someone out. No one likes to be called out or no. be told they're wrong. Yeah, exactly. And kind of if you do fall into that trap, as I learned, you then encourage the kind of aggressive behaviors from whoever you're talking to as well. Like they'll either become really passive or really aggressive, usually in my experience, really aggressive. And ultimately, you don't really want to start an argument with somebody unless, well, you don't really want to start an argument with somebody. Let's leave it at that. Um, especially if you're in a in a work circumstance, right? You want to remain prof- uh, professional, polite, and kind of diligent. Do you, do you think that's important too? Yeah, I think so. Of course, you should have um, boundaries of what you'll put up with. Obviously, mm. being like outright homophobic or whatever. Yep. For the most part, I found all my managers to be very supportive. I very rarely ever had an incident where somebody's just like outright homophobic maybe when I first got started like working corporate in like 2014 2015 but I haven't had anything considerable since then and if I do I would just go to my manager and they would handle it yeah totally get that and I think similar journey myself really I think there was one conversation way back when I was talking about giving blood and in the UK, if you have sex with men, you can't give blood for 12 months or something, something like that. And oh, it's just like at all in the US. Oh, okay. Well, may- maybe we're a little bit more lenient on it over here. But um, for some reason, that came up in conversation. And and then somebody started to question me, like, why I couldn't give blood because I wasn't like out. And it kind of turned into like this really big thing. And I definitely kind of relate to wanting to be in the middle ground like not wanting to be aggressive with somebody but not wanting to be passive and and high to you are either kind of trying to find that equilibrium of like sitting in the middle do you think that's kind of what you try to do as well yeah when I was younger I probably teetered more on one side of being Mm, more yeah outspoken with it but now I'm I definitely have my boundaries, probably where I'm in the middle, where I'll make a little bit of an effort there to correct it and I'll try to normalize it. But if somebody's like um, incoherently talking, then I'll just disengage from the situation because you're not going to get through to that. It's my yeah. point of view. Yeah. And I think that that's a skill in itself, being able to kind of disengage, I think, is is uh, definitely something that over time you kind of learn how to do. And I think like in reality, it isn't something that's going to come up every day. Like, that's it. (laughs) Like, you you don't talk to your other friends about their wives or their children every day, all day, you know? It's just something that comes up once in a while, you know? It's a a part of who they are, uh, and it's part of who you are, but ultimately, it's a kind of small part. Like, when you're talking about working with somebody, like, in a sales force, context like it's probably more important to talk about your code or your code coverage than it is to talk about your sexuality right yeah (laughs) uh code coverage here is gonna it stresses me out here with some of the coverage we have (laughs) yeah okay well let's quickly move on and uh it's fine we're not gonna get you to run all tests during the call uh (laughs) everyone needs to stop working running all tests yeah yeah exactly so uh, I think that's kind of solid. There's solid tidbits there, really. Um, if you were to summarize and appreciate this question is easier answered for a more traditional role like an admin or consultant, but if you were to kind of list out the skills attributes it takes to be kind of more proud or ultimately kind of more yourself or out in the workplace, do you think there's kind of particular words or phrases that come to mind like we've we've touched on like being assertive already which is kind of finding that middle ground right between being passive and aggressive 
Um, is there anything else that you can think of? Yeah, I definitely think, especially in the admin role, uh, that empathy is very important. Being able to comprehend and understand what the end user is going through and being able to relate yourself to that and having that incorporated into your communication with them is, a, mm. is very important. Um, that just helps translate in so many ways, whether it's being out and proud and being able to understand maybe somebody's, you know, ignorant and this could be the first time they're interacting with a queer person or it's somebody who's, you know, they have many family members. Oh, I have a gay cousin. Always comes up, I feel. <laughs> uh, or if it's just somebody that doesn't know Salesforce altogether, that empathy skill is just so very important, being able to relate and connect to people in order to serve them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a really great skill, as you said, like for, for admins, but it's also transferable to developers, consultants, architects as well, right? You need to to a certain extent, put yourself in the shoes of that user, whoever it is you're talking to, kind of embody what they may be feeling and understand not only their functional requirements, right, or technical requirements, but their emotional needs as well, because I think that's important too, right? Yeah, I agree. I see this so much in the ecosystem. The Salesforce developers are so intelligent. They can write <laughs> amazing code. But if I go and ask them to like go consider this requirement and build out this permission structure on a perm mm. set or whatever, it I'd lost them. That's not their expertise. And that's where the admins really come in and shine because the developers, at least a lot of the developers I've interacted with, there's always those like rock stars, but then become they become dev leads or ar architects mm. or whatever where they don't really consider the like end user experience or they really incorporate that into their design or even just get familiar with the like out of the box functions. They always, you know, just jump straight into that apex code. Um, I, I definitely think admins are a lot stronger than developers in terms of those personal skills. And maybe that's a controversial opinion that I'll get. <laughs> but um, developers, geniuses, but I did it myself for years and I definitely resonate with some of them I would not put in front of like business stakeholders. Mm, yeah, I can understand that. And I think maybe the fact of the situation there is that the admin has had opportunity to do it more, therefore has had opportunity to do it wrong more times and has therefore probably <laughs> learned from it, right? Yeah, they've they've touched the uh, hot stove, so to speak, and yeah. gone. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, kind of thinking about this, like in terms of what you do and and how you do it, and a bit of a kind of a bonus question here. But when you're designing a system, are there particular principles or kind of ways of working that you think can help make a system more inclusive of of everybody like just picking an example here salesforce a couple of releases back um introduce the gender neutral salutations um, oh, and the pronouns that. fields like what other things have you come across or, or heard about that you think are examples of that yeah whenever people update their like Part out web forms or marketing cloud web forms to actually mm -hmm. write to that where they ask their like preferences. Yeah. I think that's always a big win because I can think of quite a few implementations I've worked on where that's not always there, um, even though the setting might be turned on. Um, I think that's a big win. And then considering accessibility in general, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of LGBT folks impact, the pronouns one is really huge. It's a very low lift for mm. a big app. Definitely from a marketing point of view, that type of information can help you build more inclusive communications to people too. Do you think that's yes. true? It definitely can. It only helps businesses, I feel, because they can get more personal uh, mm. with their customers or prospects. And that I don't have to like list off any studies. People can probably Google it. Yeah. But it's been proven where, you know, if you have highly personal emails or outreach to your customers, mm -hmm. you can get 
a better engagement in turn and better engagement translates to all these benefits on customer metrics, whether it's retention, um, whether it's, you know, new account penetration or just all these other metrics, just being more personable and something as small as that can really help move the needle. Yeah, definitely. And it kind of helps further spread the message of inclusivity and, and love really by by making sure that all segments of your client database, whatever it is, are represented and kind of feel that they're, they're heard. So I think that's, that's a great message there. Thinking about this now as an opportunity to clarify, clear something up in terms of what it means to be kind of more proud or or be kind of out in the ecosystem is there like a common misconception or like myth that you'd like to perhaps dispel or, or clarify what it means to kind of be out in the salesforce ecosystem is there anything that kind of comes to mind yeah i don't think there's any one definition because it's different for everyone else mm. I think just being out and being able to talk about it is, you know, my definition of being out in the ecosystem. Just you don't have to like flaunt it, nor that not that there's anything wrong with flaunting it. If that's what yeah. you want to like talk about all day long, like you do you. Um, but I think at least being open to talk about it if it comes up or just suddenly, you know, doing that redirect where possible. Um, what I wouldn't say is an advocate is like, you know, there's people who will say that, oh, it's such a big part of my life in private, but then in public, they act very differently to try and hide it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that kind of suppresses who you are and, and hides who you are and ultimately means you kind of aren't being your, your genuine or, or authentic self. What else do you think, like, in terms of what Salesforce is doing with its um core principle of of equality with its employee programs including outforce and perhaps with certain characters being gender neutral and having been gender neutral since their inception do you think there's anything else there that salesforce is is doing that's kind of really helping this cause oh salesforce does a lot i know mm. I've marched with them in one of their prides back in 2016, 2017. It was in Dallas and it was without force. So I should probably correct myself. They have done stuff with the yeah. community. <laughs> they want to sound like I was bashing on them too much. Uh, but I feel like there could be a segment of Salesforce that does more LGBT stuff with community that's not necessarily just out force if their mission is employee resource group. Um, I think what Salesforce has done with the characters has created the opportunity for a lot of people to relate to that in media in which they don't typically see someone like themselves. Um, sure, it's, you know, it's a mascot for this major company brand, uh, but still it's representation and representation matters at the end of the day. Yeah. I think it's been working out for Salesforce. Yeah, no, definitely. And it helps. As I say, it's kind of like ripples throughout the community, right? Whatever Salesforce does, other people tend to follow. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's great. And kind of testing you now, but can you tell me which of the Salesforce characters are gender neutral? Astro? Yeah. Uh, um, not Cody. Um, Appy? Appy? Appy and Astro? Um... I don't think Appy is, but I was uh, thinking Sassy. Oh. Well, Sassy's <laughs> like a... I know Sassy's a character, but, like, Sassy's also, like, a, a stop sign, like, do not cross, like, you know, no software movement. Like, it's not humanoid. That's the word. Yes, that's right. Okay, fine. Um, Genie, as well, uses uh, they, them pronouns. Oh, gotcha. So they 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 definitely kind of they have the representation there in the characters subtly by the their different pronouns. So and there are I don't know if you've you've tried it yourself, but there's a number of great kind of trailhead modules on kind of equality in the workplace and kind of being more equal as well. Have you had opportunity to check those out? 
I think I did them years mm. ago. Yeah. I've been on trail ads <laughs> since it like came out. And I feel like that was one of the one of the earlier badges. So I've done them, but it's been a while since I've done them. Yeah. So maybe I can revisit them. So yeah, that that's great to know. And as I say, these these ripples spread throughout the community. So I'm glad that Salesforce is kind of on the mission here too. So thinking about this and ultimately kind of wrapping this session up now unfortunately but before we do go is there a way for people to connect with you do you have any particular content that you'd like to shout out or or share i haven't been working on too much content as of lately every now and again i'll get like the energy to blog or do like a podcast type thing on twitter space mm. or i'll do you know, something random that I wouldn't think I'd normally do. Like uh, Salesforce did a TV show at one point, uh, The Legends of Low Code. But for the most part, people can always consistently find me on all social medias at TechieZach, T-E-C-H-I-E, then Zach, Z-A-C-H. Very mm-hmm. consistent across yeah. Twitter, everything. LinkedIn, yeah, everything. Yeah, okay. And I guess if somebody listening to this and they happen to be in the Boston area, obviously more than welcome to join the the user group as well. Yes, the so I know Salesforce Saturday meets once a month and that's Daniel Gordon and Antonella that are in charge of it. Admin group, they meet at least once a month. Architect group, we try to meet at least once a month um developer group same so at least once a month there's multiple yeah. meetings okay awesome and as well as that you're involved a little bit in the ohana slack too right i am actually i was just having a conversation about <laughs> so i'm probably going to be stepping down this week right. so i don't know when this podcast will come out i did help out last year when um you know rest in peace megan broadkey she passed away um, so I did uh, help out. I built out a couple of automations for them. I um, migrated people. Uh, so Slack has this really silly feature I learned where you can only have one read-only channel um, in the version of Slack that uh, Ohana Slack was on. And the one read-only channel can only be the original general channel. General, yeah. And so we had to migrate everyone like off that, turn that into read only, and then we created general two in it. So that way the Ohana Slack admins could like, you know, actually have a spot to like send a message to everyone without Post, doing yeah. a mass DM. Mm, yeah. No. Yeah, I did help out with that. And I've also uh helped out with Texas Dream in on sponsorships and I think that's it recently. Uh, there's probably something I'm forgetting, but uh, yeah. that's what I mean. Like, I'll pop up somewhere. Yeah, no, that that's great. And I think all of these different tools utilized together can really help you embrace the ecosystem, everybody within it, and ultimately share and, and collaborate more. So thanks uh, for, for sharing some of those. So thanks again for your time today. And hopefully when this goes out in a couple of weeks' time, Um, we will inspire some more people to kind of be more proud within the ecosystem. So thanks. Yeah, it was great talking with you, Tom. Thanks for tuning in to Be More with Tom Bassett. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any feedback in the comments.